what's the probability that two people get the right key or, lo or yeah, loads yeah. of people get the right key? Exactly, right? Yeah, it's, it's you, after all these years, you're becoming a mathematician, Brady. You're asking the questions the mathematicians want to know. Okay, so um, we know, let's think about what we figured out. So before we let... Because of course that meant there's a 37% chance no one gets the right yeah. key. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. One over E, the chance you get, none of them are right is one over E, which is beautiful. So, but you know, at least one of them being correct is then one minus that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, 37% chance, one over E, that they're all wrong, no one gets the right room. But pretty decent chance at least one person does. Um, but rather than saying at least one, let's say, well, what a, what's the chance that two people do? What's the chance that exactly three people do? Four people, five people, right? We can, fig we can figure that out. But we're going to kind of reel in the infinity thing again. We're going to go back to n, and then we'll take the limit again at the end. And you'll see why, because this is like a subtlety to the argument, as with lots of these infinity problems. So what have we got? We know um, the probability of at least one key being correct. We had this formula here, didn't we? Uh, but we stopped at n. So that means the probability of no keys correct out of n, and that's going to be important because we said there's some number, probability that none of them were correct, is then 1 minus the thing we had before. So minus um, k factorial uh, minus 1 to the k plus 1, whoops, it's not k factorial, k factorial from 1 to m. Okay, so again, total probability says either none of them are correct or at least one of them is. One of those has to be true, so we use the 1 minus approach. So none of them being correct out of n is this. And we're going to come back to this in a minute, but I can simplify that just because it's nice. So I've got a minus here, so I can turn that into a plus, get rid of that. Um, and now this looks like, um, in fact, the sum from k equals naught to n of minus 1 to the k over k factorial. Okay, so we now want to know what's the probability that m are correct out of n. And you know, you want 2, so m could be 2. But let's try and get it for a general one, and then we'll sub in 2. So what does that mean? Well, we've seen so far in the problem that the specifics, like the specific keys, doesn't really matter. Right? There's like, you could think of it as like a lot of symmetry in the problem because everything's equally likely. So we can consider one specific case. So I can consider the specific case of the first m, which could be the first two being correct, and then all the others not being correct. So we write that as a complement. It means the opposite event, um, all the way up to the last one, which is this nth key. So what this is saying is very specific case of the first keys all correct for whatever number it is we're interested in. And then we're saying the rest or the remaining n minus m all incorrect. So what we've done here is just picked the simplest possible ordering and said, all right, let's just say the first chunk are all correct for whatever number we're interested in. Maybe it's two. The first two are correct. The rest of them aren't. Just keep it that way. But then we can work out that one probability. But then we don't have to have the first chunk be correct. We can actually change the order. We just need some number, which I've called m, which could be two, out of the total, which is n, to be correct. So we can actually swap and change and rearrange these. So this is just a classic counting problem. This is just like, how many ways can you pick m keys out of n? It's literally, it's that, it's, it's, it's the definition of a combinatorics problem. And the definition of how many ways are there to do that, it's n choose m. It's your binomial coefficient. So this is just like, how many ways to arrange the keys? Such that exactly m are correct and the rest aren't. Now, we know what this is. This is just involves factorials, which I'll write out in a moment. There's a formula for that. This one, we've actually figured this out. So we did this earlier because, again, we can treat these as two separate events. So really, it's the probability of all of those being correct multiplied by the probability of all of these being incorrect. Because everything's independent, so you multiply your probabilities. So for all of these first m to be correct, that's just um, n minus m factorial 
out of n factorial. So there are n factorial ways of arranging them, and there are a fixed number that are correct. And then m minus m all being incorrect, well, that's just actually this formula. This is the formula for non being correct out of a total of n, out of some number. So this is non being correct out of a smaller total, but still a total. So when we put it all together, and this is the magic, the probability of having exactly a number m key is correct. So this thing is n factorial over m factorial n minus m factorial. This one, n minus m factorial over n factorial, probability being correct. We spotted that pattern earlier when we looked at those cases. And then we have the sum. And the sum from naught to n minus 1 to the k of the k factorial. Now this is, this is quite a mouthful. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. Um, but these are going to cancel. That's going to cancel. Um, and so what we've actually just got is just this term left. So this is the number we want to know correct, could be 2. It's just 1 over that factorial times this thing. But this, this is our 1 over e. This is the thing that we saw earlier with our exponential. Um, exactly that, in fact. So we just got this m factorial term. So now when we let n go to infinity, all of these n's have all cancelled. So the only thing that changes is this. This now just goes to infinity. Because who cares if we're subtracting some number from infinity? It's still very much infinity. And now this whole thing is just 1 over e, because it's going to infinity. So probability of 0 being correct, we sub in. Uh, 0 factorial is 1, so we just get 1 over e. Probability is exactly what we found before. Always good that we, <laughs> the general result fits with the one we did earlier. And what is 1 over e? That's 1 over e is about 37%. Yeah. And then. Probability of 1 being correct. Just 1k. Is also 1 over e. Because 1 over 1, 1 factorial is 1, 1 over 1 gives you 1. So that's 1 over e. So that's also about 37%. But interestingly, and we saw earlier the probability of at least 1 being correct was 63%. So most of that, more than half of that, is coming from the exact case of 1k being correct. Like this is almost like the most likely case. And the other 30 percentage points. The other 30 percentage points come from the others. So when m equals 2, and these are going to shrink really, really fast. Because, so when m equals 2, it's, it's a half of 1 over e, right? So that's like about half of that, what, 18.5%. So that one's also pretty likely. But now once you get to 3, it's now, because of the factorial, it's 1 over 3 times 2, so it's 6. 1 sixth of that, so it's this divided by 3. So this is now down to like about 6%, isn't it? Hmm. And then if we go as far as 4, we're going to divide by 4 again. So 1 over 24 times that. So this is like 1.5%. And then it's going to be divided by 5. So for 5 of them being correct is 0.3%. And you can keep going. So it's, it's less and less likely, as you would expect, to have a higher number of keys correct. It's funny because infinite... I know infinity... I know infinity is not a number, right? But... Doing this an infinite number of times is a lot of times. Yeah. And the one was quite a high number. I was like, oh, that's higher than I would have thought. So I would have thought, oh, two, three, four, five, six, in the massive scope of infinity, they must be pretty likely too. But just going up to two or three or four, just it just falls off a cliff. Yeah, it's that factorial. So the factorial function grows. It's like factorial growth is bigger than exponential growth. So exponential growth gets talked about as like this crazy, you know, keep doubling, keep doubling. You get to these massive numbers. Factorials grow even faster. So another way to think about it, to try and make sense of it, let's say, is, again, the factorials coming in because it's to do with the number of choices. So as you get more and more keys to pick from, you're needing, you know, you've got four choices for the first thing and then three for the next and then two for the next so you're multiplying through so you get such a large number of choices from a small number of objects so again like the idea that you can just have four objects four keys there are 24 different ways of ordering them like that's like feels a lot more than you would perhaps initially think and so i i sort of it's, it's that idea that amount of choice you have in the orderings here it's a one over the amount of choice but that to me is why they're decaying so quickly. You may have noticed before, NumberFile is supported by Jane Street. 
They're a worldwide market trading firm using machine learning, programmable hardware, statistics, all that good stuff to trade on markets around the globe. In addition to hiring great people, they also run free programs giving a sneak peek into what they do. Here are just some of them, including WISE, which is currently accepting applicants. These two-day programs run in New York, London and Hong Kong. They're aimed at self-identifying women, transgender and gender expansive people who are about to start their first year of university. You can apply from anywhere around the world, no finance experience necessary, just a curious mind. Learn who Jane Street are, what they do and how they do it. You'll also meet a lot of great people just like you and have a bunch of fun. There's no cost to participate, travel and accommodation are all covered, applications close in May and June for programs taking place in July and August. Also keep an eye on the Jane Street website for other programs that might suit you. There'll be links in the description and the comments, all the usual places. Which is a difference in context, which is why we use the Omega. And after this, you can put Aleph Omega plus one, and Aleph Omega plus two, and so on. So it's infinity, infinity plus one, infinity plus two, and all the way up to infinity plus infinity, and further and further and further. 